and I would just really like to welcome everybody to this uh, Anglo-American and Migrant Leaders webinar on fitness and nutrition. Really pleased to have everybody join us. We've got some colleagues from Anglo-American and we've got several of our mentees with us this evening. So it's great to have everybody here. I'm going to hand over to Nell, who's going to be presenting on fitness and nutrition and her colleagues, Lewis and Daniela, are going to follow up um, and add their career stories and answer any questions that anybody's got. If you would like to put questions in the chat, please, you're very welcome to do so, but we'll make time for questions um, later on in the in the session. So um, be, you can turn, turn your microphone on and ask to speak or put your hand up using the Zoom controls. Okay, so thank you very much, Danielle. I'm gonna, uh, Nell, sorry, I'm gonna hand over to you. So hi everybody, good to see you all. I hope it's your second webinar. Hands up if you were in the first one. <laughs> I think there is a, a way to, you can- Yeah, you can do reactions. Things. Yeah, the reacts. Ah, yeah, Dana, Claire. Good, good. So I'll follow up on the second webinar. Yasi, yes. Um, so my name is Nell. I work as a gym manager at Anglo American. And today we are going to talk about fitness and nutrition. There's a good topic during the summer. So let me just share my screen. Right, so what we are going to talk about today. Whoops. What is fitness? How to increase physical activity? Why exercise is important? The importance of eating well and lifestyle and consideration and implications on health. So feel free to get some pen and notes and then you can write down some important advice that I'm gonna give to you. Or you can just, um, uh, it's gonna be recorded, you can watch again. Right, so. So why exercise is important? Oh, I'm going to need some help here, yeah? So in the, in the over the past five years, research shows us that sitting down for longer than two hours, two hours, has significant healthy risks, which includes increasing risk of type 2 diabetes, poor cardiovascular health, and increased risks of poor mental health and obesity. Now, hands up, two hours flies, yeah? So how many of us stay seated more than two hours? Yes, <laughs> and we don't even realize. So how can we use our watch, our mobile, anything else, our kids to help us to move? There is different ways that can help us remember that we need to stand up. So for example, I use my Apple Watch. So every hour you start vibrating, say move, 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 move. So anyone else has any idea how to remind yourself to move? Luis? So I, I block out time in my diary every day and I always go for a walk in the middle of the day um, so half an hour 40 minutes I've got a really nice near the beach so I always go down to the beach have a nice little walk come back feel really refreshed ready for the part two the second half of the day so that's uh, that's how I I kind of give myself a bit of a mental refresh during the day as well that's good anybody else so exercising is important for to look good. No, it's important to use the sugar that we put in our body because the sugar is gonna give us energy. If you don't use the sugar that we eat every day, I'm not talking about cakes, but also which is included in our food. Yes, that can give us we are more likely to have a diabetes type two and also obesity and also some cardiovascular disease, okay? So that's why it's important to exercise. 
for how long now? How long do I need to exercise? I hate exercising. <laughs> so it's not long. If you see here, it's 150 minutes or 75 minutes per week. So if you think 150 minutes, if you divide your whole week, how many minutes it's, it is per day? Twenty minutes, and if you walk twenty minutes, tick, done, you did it. Um, two muscle strengthening sessions per week. Now, ladies, we carry heavy bags. <laughs> That's our strengthening condition in the arms or backpacking. Um, Let's talk about ways to exercise. So if you don't have time to go to the gym, uh, Fauzia, what do you do? Do you take the dog for a walk? I walk actually and run. So this morning I left the house just after eight o'clock and I was running and walking for 45 minutes. So you did already almost 150. And that's, that's so, and I read your 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 presentation early in the week, and then I realised that um, I alternate. So I run one day, and then I do muscle strengthening the next day, and then run the next day, and swap round. And I usually give myself one day off a week. That's brilliant. Anybody else has a different way to exercise and would like to share? So. When I leave the tube, I take the escalator. I go on the left, left, left. <laughs> so that's a way for me to work my quads, my glutes, and also lifting my heart rate up. Um, that's some an example here. So let's see, get off of the bus before your destination. So you know you're gonna get off in, Chancery Lane, Diego. So you're gonna get off in Holborn and you're gonna walk. Cycle walk. Um, what is the other one I can't see here? Okay, walk over someone's desk instead of message. It's very easy, what's up? Someone that is just there 10 meters away. Go then talk, oh. Are you free later to take a look at this presentation or something? And water. So drink water and then you have to walk there to fill up the bottle. So this day is gonna trigger you to stand up and move. Lifestyle considerations and implications on health. So we covered so far why is important exercise and what's fitness. Now, there is some implications that we should cover that can affect your health. You're not gonna like this, but we need to cover. Smoking. So, there is many, many ways to try to stop smoking. And I know that we give an excuse and you, we postpone for next month and next month and next month, but only one month, not smoking, you'll be able to breathe better. You'll be able to run without struggling. Your skin looks better. And ways to stop smoking, we can find on NHS the free app. Um, we can have the patches, the nicotine patches. And the most important thing is, why do you want to stop smoking? Because every time you remember yourself the reasons you wanted to stop smoking, you motivate yourself to do it, correct? So for example, if you think, uh, I want to stop smoking because, um, don't know, uh, I want to save money. 
and buy a car because it, it is expensive, isn't it? So put in the Excel sheet, how much is per month that you spend buying a cigarette? And then how much you need to buy a car? So that's a motivation for you to stop smoking. And your lungs is gonna say, thank you. Right, BMI. So let's just stop here for a bit, BMI. So short people like me, 150, five foot two, it's very, very difficult to be fit because anything we eat, we breathe, we are fat. <laughs> so what do we need to do? Firstly, have the balance between your height and your weight. Okay, so if you see the picture, small people should eat less because our body composition is smaller. Yes. If you eat more than your height, it's going to go on the side, which means around your belly. And anything around your belly means you're more likely to have a cardiovascular disease, diabetes. Okay? So if you see here, let me go back there. If you see here, healthy body mass index, BMI is between 18 and 25 kilos. A healthy waist size is 80, 80 centimeters for female and 94 centimeters for male. So write down, eight centimeters for female and 94 for male. Now go there and measure yourself. <laughs> so are we in the average? So what can we do? What can we do to lose that weight around our abdomen? We call belly, yeah? So it's about to balance what you eat and what you burn. So imagine you're driving a car to New Key, yeah? So it's eight hours driving, you're gonna fill up the tank. Right, you're gonna run a marathon, you're gonna eat more. Now you're gonna work eight hours on the desk. You're not gonna move. Are you gonna eat the same thing as you're going to eat if you're running a marathon? No. Are you gonna fill up the tank if you just drive on the corner? No. So if you know your day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., you eat what you're going to use as an energy. So when you're on the desk and you're not doing much, think about 1,000 and a half calories for women and 2,000 calories for men. And based on that, because you're not doing anything else and your body just use that energy to burn. Anything extra, if you don't burn, that is going to accumulate around your waist, okay? So how to maintain a healthy weight? So being active, so you consume the energy and the, the fat that you're consuming. Eat plenty of fruit and vegetable, drink less alcohol, and aim to eat regular meals. Because if you fast too long, your body will store it, all the fat because your brain is gonna think, oh, she's gonna starve herself and I need this energy to keep her alive, okay? So keep eating slow. So a little bit of portion of nuts, yogurt, banana, and a salad with protein. So keep eating because then your body use that as an energy and also it's not gonna store it, the fat around your belly. Uh, high fiber. So fiber is very, very good. I tell you now, when you, once you know that fiber is important to you, you eat fiber, you feel full for longer. That means you don't crave for biscuits. We don't crave for biscuits. <laughs> or crisps. Uh, you know, these things that is very, very temptation. 
So increase uh, food rich in fiber, okay? And don't ban any foods that you like. So for example, you love chocolate, okay? Buy it, but cut in pieces. And one piece you eat, put it away the other one. Don't take the whole bar with you. Because as soon as you have the whole bar in your hands, that disappears. <laughs> it's very, very, it's, it's a trick thing that I do for myself. I cut in the chocolate in many, many pieces. I put it in a Tupperware and I take one bit, eat, put it away in the Tupperware, put it away. Okay, so don't ban yourself because when you think I don't eat, I can't eat, that's when you start struggling to lose weight. Okay, eat for a small bit. So examples that we can do to swap some bad food to good food, yeah? So sweets, sweetened cereals to oats, full sugar drinks to diet drinks, herbs, fruit and water, desserts to fruit, white bread to whole grain, 50-50, and sandwich for salad or soups. Now I work at Anglo American and they offer desserts every day. Brownies, cakes, every day, every day, every day. But again, it's my choice what I put in my body. If you they, you know, it's funny because some people say, oh, but I don't have time to exercise. But you are responsible to what you are putting in. Okay? You are responsible. No one is, is putting food on your mouth. You are putting food on your mouth. So always be aware, what are you eating? And how much and why? So I'm gonna train it later, I'm gonna lift some weights, I'm gonna go for a run, I need more food, otherwise I will faint. I'm gonna sit on my desk, I'm not doing anything, I'm gonna eat less food because my, my body just needs to be functioning, okay? What is your guilty, please? Crisps. <laughs> That's true. Right. Tell us the chat to hear the type of exercise you take. Okay. So I don't know about you guys, but during the pandemic, I was using a lot of YouTube. So they have so many um, online exercise that you can do. And it's very, very useful. So if you like dancing, if you like yoga, YouTube, uh, exercise for my arms, exercise for my back, you know, it's very, very useful if you don't know exactly what to do. Currently, the exercise I do is high intensity workout and jogging. Emmanuel. <laughs> MMMs, yes. But again, take five, not the whole pack. <laughs> right, how to add more whole grains and fiber to your diet? So fiber, as I said, makes you full for longer. Yeah, and it's very good for your digestion system. Also, sometimes we are not, we don't have a belly it's because it's all bloated. So fiber will help you. So who likes porridge, Rita Biggs, all this? Nobody, but <laughs> what you can do is add some fruit. Oh, uh, you know what I do, for, for example, I don't like porridge, eating porridge, but I have my, my shaker, I put porridge, two spoon of porridge, I put some frozen fruit, water, and some juice. And it's like a smoothie, it's so good. Seriously, try. Hey. So go for wholemeal or granary breads. 
again, I'm not telling you to stop eating bread and rice. Oh no, we love rice. <laughs> but eat the whole brow on the weight because it's easy for your body to digest, okay? Go for potatoes with their skins, sweet potatoes, the best. And for snacks, try fresh fruit, vegetable sticks, rye crackers. So rye crackers with hummus, oat cakes, unsalted nuts and seeds. So there are loads, loads, loads of options that we can take a look as a snack. And the most important is this, guys, take a look underneath, the dietary fiber. So take a look at this yellow information in every pack that you buy, because that is important for you to know if it's rich in fiber or not, okay? Any questions, guys? Send me some messages in here. So now what sort of level of fiber should we be looking for on the guidance? So the six grams, that is the minimum that we should have. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right, let's talk about salt. Guys, if I'm talking too fast, let me know, yeah? So let me just move this here, okay. So salt, I love, I love salt in my food, really do. But it's so bad because Increase the risk of stomach cancer. We didn't know that. And damage the lining in the intestinal uh, and can increase the risk of infection, okay? So how do we do that if we like salt? Compare nutrition labels on the food packing. Buy tinned vegetables without added salt because they give the information so we can take a look if there is salt or not. Use other herbs instead of salt. So for example, uh, oregano or what else, cinnamon, something that is salted that you can just replace with the salt. Oh, and the ketchup. Who likes ketchup? <laughs> right. Instead of take the bottle, <laughs> put in a spoon and a teaspoon, and that's enough for you. One teaspoon of ketchup. No, the whole plate of ketchup. Because as soon as you squeeze the ketchup on your plate, you don't know how much grams in there. You don't have a clue. Oh my God, how much salt I just put on my plate. Loads, loads. So one spoon of, tea, one teaspoon of ketchup, that's enough, okay? Alcohol intake. Oh no, it's summer. Summer. Louis, what do you think? Beer, cider. Pause, yeah, wine. All, all sounds fantastic. Right, we can still take, of course, we are human. We need to celebrate life and it's there, so why not? However, what is the recommended upper limit for alcohol intake? 10 pints, five pints? How many pints of beer? or glasses of wine, does that equate it to? Right, ready? 14 units. Now, if you drink 14 units, you have to run for 102 minutes to burn those calories. So since it's summer, I think we start, we have to start running now. <laughs> because it's like 3.5 burgers is 1,023 calories. So now you know there's a lot of calories in your drink. 
what can we do? Swipe it one nights out and make every other drink no alcoholic. Less is better. Choose a smaller glass. Okay. Or lower strength drinks. And track on your app as well how many calories and try to have some alcohol free days each week. So we can do Monday to Thursday free alcohol free and then friday saturday sunday you keep the units that we just discussed 14. so 14 divided by three is achievable isn't it <laughs> oh we do 14 you want day right so now we know regarding waste smoke um fibers, alcohol, salt. Let's think about how can we improve. So guys, just quickly, just to finalize here, we are running out of time. So how can we improve? So action plan and summary. Yeah, I did hear somebody that time. So if you're trying to ask a question, if you can find the chat and then type in the chat, that would be really helpful. Right, so we call a smart goal, okay? So you need to find two areas that you want to focus, only two areas. So let's say my abdomen and my arms, because I've got flatty arms or big arms, and I want it to look good, or uh, and the boys want to look strong, uh, or the legs. So identify two uh, areas and track your progress. So for example, to reduce my current my current weight of by one stone in six times, six months times. So what we do as a personal trainer with my clients. I ask them what they would like to change. So most of them wants to lose weight. So I write that, lose weight. So in four weeks, you wanna lose two kilos. Okay, it's achievable. And I wanna increase my muscle mass five kilos. Five kilos, okay. So we have the two targets. Have you got yours, guys? So how I'm gonna do this? How I ask my clients, how how committed are you to lose weight, which means two kilos in four weeks, and to increase our muscle mass for five kilos? So they tell me, I will walk my dog every day, and I ask them for how long? One hour. Which day? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, but. If something happened, if you have to, to work longer and you can't go for a walk, what else can you replace? So I challenge my, my clients to have ideas on how they are going to lose these two kilos and how they're going to uh, get stronger and increase the muscle mass in five kilos, okay? But there's a commitment. So again, how are you gonna create yourself a motivation for this commitment? Remember what we said in the beginning? Write down why do you want to do it? Why? I'm not happy the way I am, but why? What's not making you happy? Is because you can't fit your clothes? Is because you fatigue when you walk when you have to run for the bus is because you want to have more energy and uh, play with the kids or because you want to look younger because people think you're 40 when you're only 20. <laughs> why? Write down why do you want to lose weight and change your body? 
Because remember, your body is not changing from outside, your body is changing from inside, yeah? So all the body fat around your lungs, your stomach, your kidney, your heart is gonna shrink. So it's less pressure into your vital organs. So imagine this is your heart and your body fat is just creating a lot of pressure around your, your heart. That's not good. So lose that. That fat needs to go needs to be energy, needs to be useful when you walk, when you, when you, you reach for something, when you do some burpees, when you do push-ups, do a challenge. I'm going to do a challenge uh, August from the 1st until the 31st. I'm going to do 20 push-ups every day. And measure your arms, measure your chest. By the end of the month, you will be surprised how much fat you lost in your upper body. Do burpees. Today I'm gonna to do 10 burpees, tomorrow 20, next day 30. You're gonna be surprised by the end of the month, you can be, you can do like 50 burpees. But we need to start from somewhere because COVID for two years made us, made us, um, totally, how do I explain? Not fatter, but made us sedentary and we didn't have a choice. So we had to stay at home for one year. So now we are paying the price. We are paying the price because we have more BMI. We have more body fat. But if we know now that we can lose what we had from last year, that is not gonna accumulate for the next and next and next year. But if you don't act now, what happened last year, that is gonna become worse. Do you understand guys? So knowing that we accumulate more fat during COVID, act now, act now. You don't need to go to the gym. If you don't like the gym, play football. Who likes to play football? Basketball, cricket, um, volleyball. There are so many, many sports available. If you just go um, Google on London, or um, I don't know where you guys live, there's plenty of activity. Or oh, play squash, play tennis. You know, anything that makes you move, makes your heart beat fast. For your heart to beat fast, needs energy. And the energy comes from the fat. And that's it. Very simple, but why don't we do it? Tell me your barriers. Tell me what makes you uh, demotivated on exercising. Guys, tell me, tell me, share with me. Well, this is going to be a bit like virtue signaling, but I actually work full time. So I really struggle to fit in the exercise, but, and, and I have put on pandemic weight. So now I try and get up earlier and do my exercise in the morning, get it out of the way. And then I, and I do sit at my desk for hours at a time. I do. Uh, so I, I, I never been a big gym goer at all whatsoever um and when i go when i walk into a gym i look at all of the stuff and go well i don't really know what that thing does and i don't really know what that thing does so i i i thought i'd just take make it easy for myself so i joined a strength and conditioning gym about six six weeks ago and that's great because i just turn up and i get told to pick that up and put it over there and all of these different exercises and you know, I I, I work full time. I don't have a child. Um, I do not have time to to figure out a gym regime where I will increase muscle mass or whatever it may be. So I just yeah. go there, do as I'm told, and it really works for me. And I've been really enjoying it the last six weeks. That's good. Yeah, the classes here, our classes are very very popular because that's it. People they don't know. They're in the gym is like, oh my gosh, 
how do I even use the, the treadmills? The way do I press? So many things. The technology looks like you're in Italy, in Spain, and that's too much. So yeah, join the classes because then you can see other people doing. They think, oh, I'm not, I'm not here alone. And they do wrong, and then you do wrong, and then you know, and you socialize as well. Absolutely. What else, guys? Tell me. I'm here to help you. But I'd like to ask any of the students that are join, have joined us if they play any regular sports. I know when I interview you, often you tell me that you're playing badminton or basketball, things like that. So please turn your camera on or turn your speaker on and let us know what you do. Nell's desperate to find out. <laughs> I don't yeah. Anybody else? Badminton's really good because you do get out of breath, even though it's a, a very light shuttlecock. <laughs> You're yeah, out of yeah. breath. Or swimming. It's true. And also, guys, um, you know what helps me to to exercise? Music music is very important so download on spotify make a track list spotify or oh, like this song this song is so 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 much better when you have a nice music to listen and you just do it pa, 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 because the music's good we've got some messages in the chat that i'm going to have a quick look at yep so we're running and walking just fitting in a simple walk in the morning is helpful. Badminton and basketball, we've been told. Anybody else got any questions that they might want to ask? I feel I need a one-to-one -one fitness session with Nell, actually. <laughs> and do something that you guys love, because the worst thing, I don't like running. I don't, I don't like running, oh my gosh. People go there 5K in 30 minutes. Well done. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's so boring. So what I love doing is boxing. I love boxing. It, I, ah, I put my gloves and I just put some music on, you know, and it's so much fun. So do what you think, do what you love because that doesn't become a task for you, it becomes enjoyable. Right, so nobody else has any question here. Uh, Fauzia, feel free to finish the topic. I will. Um, Daniela, I will leave you my email on the, on the chat. So if anyone has any question, uh, that's my email. Please feel free to email me. That's really helpful, thanks now. And I, would, I just wanted to ask Daniela and Lewis if they wanted to share um, information about their career stories or their exercise routines. Um, we've got about 10 minutes before we finish the session. So please, Daniela, how about if I ask you to contact? Sure. Well, I mean, if you're not feeling motivated after that from now, I mean, I sure am. I feel like after this call, I need to get up and get moving. I've been in a series of very long calls today, so my movement has been absolutely minimal. So I feel like now, thank you for cracking the whip and reminding us all. Um, I guess probably fitness side of things for me, I've probably tried every single exercise under the sun. It took me a long time to find something that I enjoyed. And um, high intensity interval training was really trendy over lockdown. And I tried it, I gave it my best shot, but I just wasn't enjoying it. Um, I finally got a little bit more confident in the gym. There's a lot of apps available on the app store with training regimes, how to use all the different machines. So that's really helped me. And um, so I try to go to the gym. I do reformer Pilates once a week and I also do boxing on a weekend. So now I'm with you on that one. It's a great stress reliever. 
Um, so once you find something you enjoy, stick to it, but don't be afraid to try new things because you will find your niche of something that you enjoy. Even just a podcast when you're walking, I found is really useful. You can learn a lot during that time just listening to some of the amazing podcasts that are available. Um, in brief, my career story. So happy to disclose I'm 31. Um, I went to Brighton University and studied politics and sociology. Thought I was going to go down the politics route. It becomes slightly boring to me, so I didn't. I had no idea what I was going to do when I left university. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was because I'd been I didn't have any money for quite a long time. I was really keen to just get a job and, and start earning and getting some experience under my belt. So I went through various financial administrative roles. Um, and then one way or another, I decided, oh, HR sounds quite nice. You know, I've got some transferable skills from the admin side of things that I can bring to HR. Um, so I've worked in HR for an, a number of years now, um, and I've moved into more recently alongside Lewis, um, the HR technology team at Anglo American. Um, and it's just a really good time to, to be in that team. We're doing a lot of work to bring in a lot of automation to the work that we do and, and see what new technologies and um, funky tech is available out there for us to be able to enhance what we do within HR. Um, so I guess probably one of the things I've learned in my career is just don't be worried if you don't know what you want to do once you've finished your studies. Um, try different things, try what interests you, um, and then eventually you'll find your niche. Probably similar to the fitness story, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's uh, in short from myself. Lewis, would you like to take five minutes to share your career story? Absolutely. I think you're going to take a leaf out of Danny's book around trying new things. Um, and, you know, I still don't know what I want to do. I'm 37 years old and I've still not managed to figure it out. I think, you know, I, so I, I work in HR technology um, alongside Daniela. Um, and my role is a, um, my official job title is talent acquisition technology specialist. So if you were to apply for a job at Anglo American, you might go through a video interview, you may go through a, an assessment, uh, a long application process, and and I'm I'm the man you can blame for that. So I do apologise. Um, so if you do go to our website and see all of the jobs, that's kind of my area of specialism. So you know we receive hundreds and hundreds of thousands of applications every year. So it is a bit of a specialist role within our organisation to make sure that all of those technologies are are all working perfectly for our candidates. Um, and our recruiters and our team so we can provide a, a great experience for, for everyone, people who are successful and people who ultimately are rejected. But my, my, my career has been pretty, pretty, pretty varied. I think I, I did computer games design at university for four years in, in, the, in the, an amazing university of Bolton. So I mean, my educational experience is pretty average, I think is probably the best way to put it. But um, I got the opportunity to work as a, a software tester for a, a small technology company in Wimbledon. And, and I did that for about three months and I hated it. Um, but what, one thing it did teach me was that, you know, attention to detail and, um, and being really, um, really focused on the, the outputs we were looking to achieve as a team. So I quickly actually moved and moved into their consultancy for part of the company. I worked there for about five years, implementing technology through to different clients. I did a lot of travel. So I spent time in the US. I've spent time in South Africa. And I became a bit of a specialist in this particular technology and technologies within all of kind of multiple different technology providers eventually. And so, so yeah, so it's really given me the opportunity to travel. I've, I've spent a day and a half in Kazakhstan on an implementation, and so which is probably the most obscure place I've been to in my on my travels and my career. And now I, I work in in-house angle. Um, so I work with um, people like, like Daniela and specialize in all of those technologies and the, the big the big technology implementations we we're um, we're, we're working on at the moment. Um, so a bit of career advice I would say um, for me. I suppose it comes down to your, so similar to Danny, when I, when I look, got, found my first job, I was just like, oh my God, this is incredible. This is the most I've ever been paid in my entire life. It was just like, hold on and just 
just just make sure you get through your probationary period right and and actually that that was a huge that's a huge driver right um but but subsequent roles that I've gone to and I've applied to I've I've not made the decision purely based on any kind of you know um reward and considerations of uh, salary considerations it's always been a for me it's always been a, okay well how do I expand my knowledge on my given area how do I build on what I'm what I'm great at and that's how I kind of figured out in my career I figured out what I'm not very good at and I figured out what I am good at and I can specialize on that and build on that platform so learning about all of these different technologies from a consultant perspective from a technology perspective now working in-house it's given me quite a rounded experience if I look at my peers within my team there's very few people that have been on the journey that i've been through so i think it really puts me in quite a quite a, an interesting space so yeah so that's that's probably my advice is when you're looking at your next career move is pick the role where you think you're going to expand your knowledge the most because really that you know in, in in the types of roles that myself and danny do those skills that knowledge that that's what's really going to take you up take you further travel if that's what you want to do um or you know move up that career ladder if that's if that's where you ultimately want to be so yeah that's a bit of bit of advice i've kind of kind of learned along the way really that's really great lewis and, and that's definitely a message that we try and share with our students uh, in, from migrant leaders is to really focus on your strengths and work in those areas where they're going to really help you out to achieve what you want to achieve. Um, thanks very much. No now, now I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you kind of just gravitated towards fitness in your career. Am I right? <laughs> uh, no, actually. So I'm from Brazil and I was a journalist in Brazil. Yeah. So I came here. 20 years ago, and I didn't know what to do because um, I, I couldn't be a journalist with my imperfect English. <laughs> so I thought, what do I love most after journalism? And it was fitness. So I had to learn everything about body, uh, muscle, skeleton, everything in English. But because I loved so much, so much, my passion for fitness just uh, drove me to, to do it. And from fitness instructor and then progressing, progressing. Now I'm a gym manager and always studying uh, and updating myself is really important. So at the moment, I'm doing a apprenticeship called leadership management, which is, is going to be two years, hard work, study until midnight, come to work next day. But the amount of uh, knowledge that I'm gaining is amazing. And, I'm, can, and I can say that it's affecting my relationship with my daughter, with my partner at work as well, because everything that you, you learn, you, you apply in your daily life without you knowing. That's amazing. I, and I think if you can actually enjoy your work so much, then you're winning at life, aren't you? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> They Thanks stream. very much, everybody. Um, right, I just want to throw the floor open to the students to see if there are any final questions for either Nell, Lewis or Daniela. Um, it's really interesting to know that people's careers are able to shift and you still enjoy doing what you're doing and getting the best out of your, your role. Um, so if anybody has any questions about that or any about, about fitness or nutrition, please fire away. We've got about four minutes before we need to end the session. So happy to take questions. Mm -hmm. I feel really uh, conscious that I've shared a lot of my secrets with everybody in this session. <laughs> so please, I feel you need to share back. <laughs> Well, I've got my apple here that I've been slowly eating on during the day. So no crisps for me. <laughs> I've got one last piece to go. Well done. Well done. Does any, okay. I don't think anybody is going to be asking any questions. So I'm going to wrap up and say thank you very much to Nell, Daniela and Lewis. Particularly thank you for sharing your email address, Nell. So if anybody has taken a note of that, um, they, they may well be in touch. Mention Migrant Leaders if you are getting in touch with Nell so she realises where you're writing from. Um, 
I'm going to say thank you again. Good evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. Have an even better weekend. And thank you so much. Let's call it a day. Thanks, thank everyone. you, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye now. Thank you.